Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me today. Um, this is uh, a video that um, the Lord just kept giving me more information on the five wise and the five foolish virgins. And um, so if you, this just goes hand in hand with the last couple of videos that I've done. And so he's asked me now to share um, share this. And this was given Saturday night and yesterday morning. Um, and it, it has to do with you know, the five, the five wise were those who, um, the five wise virgins were those who had personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ. The five foolish were those who had, um, uh, relationship with the world's view of Christ. So religion, um, and he had, he wanted me to share this. So, you know, with God, everything um, his reality is not our reality. His, as in Isaiah um, 55, um, I think it's eight and nine, you know, God's ways are not our ways, nor are his thoughts our thoughts for their, his ways are higher than our ways. And so are his thoughts. And so um, if we look at it just from the perspective that we have, we're missing uh, what he is teaching us because it all has to be uh, understood in the spirit. And so he's going to have me <clears throat> go over that today. So this is what he shared with me about his um, definition of virgin and it's a pure and precious and chosen vessel for the lord and so he will use the wise virgins to perform his work um and and the five foolish ones what happened when they knocked on the door of the wedding feast um he didn't know them because they didn't know him <clears throat> and so um so it's really important that we understand relationship with Jesus Christ is where it's at, and it is not about religion. Um, and he wanted me to share, I'm sorry, I've been sick, so I'm trying to talk loud and it might be a little rough. Um, also, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, is the longest conversation that he had with one person in the New Testament. And it was a place where you know, people didn't go talk to the Samaritans. They they all um, kept kept their distance for different you know contentious reasons. And what Christ was teaching the woman at the well was, yes, I know this is the tradition of what you've always done, but I offer you something. You know, I I offer you the living water. I offer you something the world can't offer you. And so when he's walking me through um, that parable over and over again. It is key in understanding he was teaching her, you know, the, the ways of the world. So traditions, religion, um, versus true relationship and what he will truly give you. So, um, so again, today is about, um, calling, calling the churches, um, out, out, uh, calling them out to repentance and he's been having me do this since the video of have you picked up your Christ or cross and followed Christ? If so, where have you followed him to? Um, so there's going to be a lot of reading today, and I don't have a lot of time saved on my storage, so I'm going to have to pause as I look up scriptures. Um, but he wanted me to start this with Jeremiah chapter 2 and 7. And he, uh, the Lord would like you to read these with him directly with the Holy Spirit. This is a huge warning to the churches. So um, this is what he walked me through. So the churches, they have led man to false gods and idols with their opinions on doctrine, their ways and beliefs, and their false traditions. Uh, words of scriptures understood from an earthly mindset. So they understand the scriptures from a, a worldly mindset, an earthly mindset, and this is why there is so much contention over doctrine, man's belief of what the word means. And um, he wants me to read uh, Matthew 16, 1 through 12. Okay. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowing, low, lowering. 
O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. And when his disciples came to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And so the Pharisees and Sadducees represent um, these religious institutions that Christ is literally calling them to repentance. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So in order to understand things um, that Jesus Christ is giving at this time, we must be letting him walk us through this spiritually. And this is where we must be born again. Um, his whole, with the Holy Spirit um, guiding us, there is zero contention over doctrine because you get, to, you get it firsthand of the spirit of truth, untainted by the world. This is why we must become as a little child teachable. But now instead of being teachable to the world standards, you are teachable to the Holy Spirit leading you. And, and um, as the Holy Spirit leads you, it takes you back into the mysteries of the kingdom of God, which is what Jesus Christ desires for each of us to understand. So um, he's going to have me go into John 3. Let's see, hold on. Okay, so this is John 3, 3 through 13. Jesus answered and said unto him, verily. So this is when um, Nicodemus came unto him. Oh, I'm sorry, and it's two. Okay. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, sorry, unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it came and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can this be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and thou knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and we testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I had told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So he is telling us in verse 13, you know, these heavenly things, we are able to understand them, but... He's saying, if we have come down from heaven, then it is possible for us to be born again in the spirit to understand the things from heaven, because that's where we resided before we came here. 
So each and every person has the opportunity to learn in the spirit, but they have to so desire that. And they have to um, allow their hearts and, and minds to be focused on Christ and allow that uh, the Holy Spirit in to become your teacher. Okay, and that's where becoming that little child teachable. Um, and this is so key in what he just had me say a minute ago about if you are listening to the prophecies that are being given and you are like, well, that's not correct and that's not correct and that's not what the word says and you are not going to understand what these prophecies are, are actually um, that are being shared in the portion in which we are asked to give them. If you are not in the spirit, you are not going to understand and hear what is actually being said. Um, and with the Holy Spirit, again, there is no contention in the doctrine because it comes untainted from the world directly through the spirit of truth. And that's the beauty of, you know, the five virgins. They have done the they have done the work to be in that true relationship with Christ, being led by the Holy Spirit in all things. So, um, and this again, so this is the Spirit in Matthew 16, 13, 19. Um, and so let me get to that. Okay, so in 13, uh, sorry, in Matthew 16, 13 through 19. Sorry, I thought I had that marked. I guess I didn't have it all marked. Um, hold on, let me make sure this is the right one. Okay, so it's, um, it is 16, um, 13 through 19. And this again, what if you are part of the church that he is talking about in scripture, we have to understand what Christ is saying um, to his disciples about his church. So 16, 13 through 19. When Jesus came into the coast of, uh, I'm not sure how to say that, um, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? That's a question that he's asking each of us. Who is Christ directly to us? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So flesh and blood cannot reveal to us who Christ is. Um, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So why did he say you are Peter? He's taking Christ's role is to take everything back how it was at the beginning. Spiritually, Peter had just been shown, you are Christ, the son of the living God. It was done in the spirit. Then in return, Christ says, and yes, and you are Peter. He was mimicking the spirit. The spirit had testified to Christ that he was Peter from the beginning. And, and the spirit had testified to Peter that he was Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Spirit. It is the spirit upon, so, and upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So spirit, his church are people who are spiritually led, being led by the Holy Spirit, not by man. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then this is the key. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Why? Because it is up to us to build that personal relationship with him so that we too can testify, this is the, this is the living Christ, the son of the living God. Um, so it's all very beautiful. So it's all about being spiritually led. And, and he promises that the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. To understand the mysteries of the kingdom, we must be taught in the spirit and no longer by man. And this is um, 1 John 2.27. Okay, so this is 1 John 2.27. Um, but the anointing which thou have, have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide. 
in him. So who has taught us? Not man, but the spirit. And that's why people are being taught by the world. They don't understand what the people that are being taught by the spirit are saying. Ye, um, why they're... Oh, and this, this is why um, Christ explains why there is no forgiveness for, for blasphemy against the, whole, the witness of the Holy Ghost. And this is in Matthew 12, 31 and 32. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. And those are those who are in a worldly mindset. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man... Christ, it shall be forgiven him. But whoso speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall be, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world or in the world to come. So the key is for all of us to live uh, being led by the Holy Spirit. And so Christ even says, I'm showing you forgiveness for, um, for those who speak blasphemy even against my name, but the thing I will not show forgiveness for are those who are being um, taught in the Holy Spirit and they blaspheme against what the Holy Spirit tells them. So we are held absolutely accountable once the Spirit begins to teach us. Okay, so um, again, so this is all, everything that he's having me share is the spiritual aspect of this. Okay, so now he's having me go to Colossians 2, 8 through 11. Okay, beware lest any man spoil you, through uh, theologies and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments, I'm not sure I'm saying that right, of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body. The fullness, if we want the full understanding of the gospel and what she promised to give us, we have to allow him to take us to the place of being taught by the Spirit. And ye are complete in him. You need nothing more from the world. You need no man teach you because he is complete. You are complete in him. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Without hands, why? Because it's being done in the Spirit. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Okay, the next one. So the next one he wants me to go to is Mark 14. Okay, so this is Mark 14, 58 and 59. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands and within three days, I will build another made without hands. He will build it up again in the spirit. But neither so did their witness um, agree together. So they didn't understand what he was saying. Okay, so again in Revelations 11. Um, let's this really quick. Okay, Revelations 11, 1 says, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar of them that worship therein. So the temple of God, he just said, what is the temple of God? The temple of God, it, it's your spiritual walk with him. And so he's going to now um, measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. So in spirit. Okay, and then he said to read um, Revelations 22. I'm sorry, 21, 22. And this is what it says. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And that was Revelation um, 21, 22. So Every, this is all spiritual. Everything that he is, is um, walking us through, this is a spiritual walk. If you desire to receive the messages being given, you must be in the spirit to receive them. This message, These messages are layered for the same reason that Christ spoke in parables. Um, and that's what he's having people do now is speak in these parables. Um, and it's 
for those who are truly ready um, to understand the ways of the kingdom and no longer... Um, he, his desire is to help us overcome the world, and he takes us out of the world, um, be in the world but not of the world, and that's what he's doing through this spiritual process. Um, okay, so he wants me to read Matthew 13, 16 through 19. Okay, this is Matthew 13, thir um, sorry, 16 through 19. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Okay. So it's so important when we hear something that we don't understand, we need to take it back to Christ. And that's why everyone that is that is being led by the Lord right now should be leading you back directly to Christ. Take it to Christ. Let him walk you through this. Um, he had me do the video... Um, probably about three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, I don't remember. And it was, have you taken up your cross and followed Christ? And, um, and in that video, he's calling the, he's calling the churches, every church to repentance. He's calling the people to repentance. If, if you claim to follow Christ, where are you being, like, if you, if you claim to pick up your Christ, your cross and follow Christ, where have you followed him to? Where his religion took you into your relationship with Christ? Where are you following Christ to? Um, this is what is happening in Jeremiah 2, chapter 2 and chapter 7. Where are your priests, pastors, and prophets leading you to? So he has Matthew um, 16, 16, 20. I think that I already read that, but let's go back and see what it says here. 1620. And again, so this is, then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ because it's for us to build that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with him and we are to find out for ourselves who Christ is directly to us. And then, okay, so this is the warning also in Jeremiah 2, 8. Okay, I think, oh, Jeremiah 2, 8. I'm sorry, I was looking in Jeremiah 8 and I'm like, I think I wrote down the wrong scripture. Um... Okay, Jeremiah 2, 8. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handle the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Bel, and walked after things that do not profit. So if you are not, if you haven't taken up your cross and you're following Christ and he's leading you to where he is, um, and you're still following man and man's theologies and we know where Christ is and just come and worship with us and and we'll, we'll tell you things that tickle your ears and feel good and then you go on about your week. That doesn't profit anyone anything. Um, so he's calling the people to repentance, to come out of the world, out of their false traditions, out of their false doctrines, out of their false beliefs, out of the false suppression of men, out of the control of men. Um, that as Christ taught in Matthew 13, 15, that he will heal you. So let's make it to, hold on, I'm going to pause this again. Okay, so Matthew 13, 15. Uh, states for the people's hearts is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted converted unto Christ and I should heal them that is his promise to us he desires to, to heal the people Christ is calling for the peop 
Christ is calling for a people that claim they follow him to repent and to now come unto him that he may heal you from the fallness or from this fallen state and the brokenness of this world that you will be able to now pick up your cross and follow him to where he is. This call um, only can be done by dying to the flesh and now living in the spirit, by hearing him, hearing his voice and obeying him, no longer man. And this is Jeremiah eleven four. So we hear his voice and we do what we are commanded to do in the spirit as a spirit directs. And so again, that's Jeremiah eleven four. Okay. Which I command your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace saying, obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. So shall ye be my people and I will be your God. Um, so he has me this, this, and this is the last um, scripture that he'll have me share. And this is John, um, 14, two. I'm yeah, for, sorry, 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Brothers and sisters, if we are not seeing greater works being done um, than what Christ did, because this is why he prophesied it, then sitting with him and really evaluating our hearts and seeing who is leading us and allowing him to renew our minds and, and become as that little child sitting before him and seeing what needs to be renewed in us um, so that his work and what he promised his people, that they would do greater works than he did. But um, they cannot do that without being spiritually led. And that is the rock that he will build his church upon. It's the rock of the spirit. So um, I'm sorry that I had to rush through this. Like I said, my, my camera has, doesn't have a lot of time left on it. And so I was trying to do this as quick as I could. But I pray, brothers and sisters, that you will take this before the Lord and truly sit with him and, and let him take you into a place of the Spirit. And, and when you hear things that you don't understand, don't dismiss them. Sit with him and allow him to teach you because it is always line upon line. It's always like he gives you an understanding. He gives you an understanding, gives you understanding. He puts it together. Like, I mean, it's literally like pieces of a puzzle, literally that he just puts together. And as the body comes together, all these pieces are being put together. And that's truly how it is. But if we dismiss it, that's what he warned, you know, with the, the parable of the sower. When something is sown into your heart and you're like, oh, but I don't understand that. That's when the evil one can come in and he takes it away because it looks different from the world. Because God's ways are not our ways. His reality is not our reality. And he told me that in the very first dream that he had me share when he showed me the eternities. And he took me through the whole day. Christ took me through the day. And then in the evening, he took me into the presence of God. And God opened up the eternities, the heavens like a scroll, and showed me his vast creation. And when I sat there and pondered as he had me go and do the follow-up video to that, um, you know, I was like, this is the most amazing dream I've ever witnessed in my life. And he says, this isn't a dream, but this is my reality. And in that moment, it made me realize we look at this world like this is the reality. And God is like, no, this is not my reality. This is, this is your guys's reality. I want to take you into my reality and show you what I have to offer. So as always, please take this to the Lord. Um, so and, and repentance is change. He needs his people to change these things that they're doing that are not profiting them. They are not, um, they are not getting them to where he is and, and he desires for us to be where he is. So, um, God bless and have an amazing day.